such an honor to, to be able to, to join, of course, uh, Mrs. Beavers and here with my wife uh, to talk a little bit about, you know, kind of our motivation for, for fostering uh, young people and then also kind of say a bit about what we think um, might be important concepts uh, for those who might be considering fostering uh, to consider. And, and so I'll talk a little bit about kind of my viewpoint and, and my motivation, which I think is a shared sentiment with my wife. And then um, certainly we'd love to hear um, Mrs. Beaver, who is like a veteran, you know, mm -hmm. she, she's, she's the gold standard when it comes mm -hmm. to, to fostering. So we'd love to hear her wisdom on this. Uh, I've, I've done a number of interviews as it relates to foster care, because not only do we foster, but we also are attempting to lead the charge uh, with our congregation and all of our partners and friends around this topic. Goodness. And I think what has been unique, um, at least as far as, as far as I'm concerned, is this notion that foster care or fostering vulnerable children, I believe can help solve the ills uh, that are taking place in all aspects of society. We know there's a pipeline um, from the foster care system into the prison population. We know there's a pipeline into homelessness. We know there's a pipeline into, into human trafficking, sex trafficking. So when we recognize that this, unfortunately, this foster care system and the young people that are in these, you know, uh, places of instability are leading into these various, you know, social ills in society. If we, we want to solve those big problems, I think we can solve them by getting intimately involved and helping to give incredible kids a safe and loving place to grow up and to be nourished. And so for me, that's why I'm, I'm, uh, you know, I'm so excited about fostering and about leading the charge around this conversation because I believe I can kill multiple birds uh, with this stone of love toward these children. We can help to decrease the prison population, decrease homelessness, decrease human trafficking, decrease drug addiction um, by giving solid family environments to kids. So that's one of the motivations that, that really inspired me. Adrian, I don't know about you. Seeing foster care in my home. So my parents were foster care parents. And so um, I knew that I, it was something that I wanted to do when I got older. And we had talked about it and um, discussed wanting to do it. And we thought it was going to be a little further out. But um, in around 2015, we just kind of kept hearing um, conversations, finding ourselves in in um, certain dynamics that kind of really gave us more of an insight into what was happening in LA County. And so we decided to just take the step and um, with the recognition that, you know, there are so many kids that are in difficult spaces. And I think for me as a mom, we have four kids of our own. Um, as a mom, I could not imagine what it would be like for any of my children to be in a difficult space and to not have a safe place to land. Mm -hmm. And so as we kind of just began to think about that and pray about that, it became apparent that the timing was on us, you know, to go ahead and get certified. And um, it's something that we have enjoyed doing. We do it really with the end goal of reunification um, because we want families in our community to be whole. Um, and so, um, it, it, it is all of the things that you think. It is grief, it is emotional, it's difficult, mm -hmm. but there is so much love and there's so much fun. And, and just to watch a child come into your home and be able to grow under the stability and the love um, and the security that you can provide, it really is a blessing from God to be able to do it. And so, you know, for me, it is just a joy and a privilege to be able to bless these kids, to be able to bless their parents, their, their extended family, um, and to be a part of the solution. What we noticed was, and, and not noticed as if it was a hidden, hidden fact, what we were made aware of was that the disproportionality around children of color you know, in the foster care system. And there's some things we're working on now with our churches and partners around this, but when we talk about equity, and we talk about the servicing of, and I'm gonna be very frank, of little black boys in particular, it, it, it's, it's come to my attention Little black boys are the hardest um, of the population to be placed. We just knew that there was something important about seeing to the welfare of, of little brown children that need to experience the same love that every child wants to have. And in our estimation, I mean, and I think for both of us and probably for many of you, the reason that we were able to take risk in life and try to accomplish and, and actualize our potential is when we had 
you know, our uh, family as a, as a net to catch us when we made mistakes. Like life is about, you know, successive failure on the way to success. And when you don't have a stable environment to be that, that bungee, to be that, that, uh, that, that net, oftentimes you, you are a little more reluctant to, to launch out and to try things. And so for us, knowing that all of God's creation has unlimited potential, but oftentimes children who don't know that they can try things and not be so great at it, but continue to, to work it, they don't have that, that push, that, 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 can, that village behind them, oftentimes, you know, they don't reach out and try to do things that they could do. So for us, you know, our heart's desire was we want to give kids and create an environment that gives kids a safe place to land, but to try things great, to, to move into the fullness of their potential. So we really worked hard at trying to do that for the kids that we've had, you know, of the children we've had, we've, um, we, about half of them have been little, little boys. Um, in fact, our longest placement uh, was a little, a little boy, incredible little boy who came to us um, at 13 weeks, yeah. at 10 weeks, with a lot of um, a lot of opportunity for growth and a lot of you know hard place issues, a, a lot of trauma, and um, and honestly, Adrian taking the lead on the nurturing aspect of, but us collaboratively nurturing this little boy, uh, we believe that we played a role in helping him to actualize his potential because we loved him in the hard space and loved him into I we believe a healthy space as he moved into the next phases of his life. So I think that's a really important part is knowing that, you know, a lot of our work has to do with, it's more about them than it is about us. It's not about fulfillment for us. It's about giving them the chance to be great, them the chance to actualize all the potential that God has placed inside of them. I, I don't know if you kind of have some thoughts around that. Yeah, and I think, you know, that is a really big point is it is about them. Yeah. And I think even what I would say to, even those that are aspiring or thinking about becoming foster parents, you really do have to make it about the kids. There are going to be so many reasons why you feel like I can't do this. It's whether it's your schedule, whether it's your family situation, whether it's your housing situation, there will be so many reasons that will try to talk you out of um, why you should step into it or why you should become a part of the solution. Um, they have no control over what family they were born into, no control over their circumstances. And they just need a place to thrive. They need a place, a safe place to process their trauma, to be able to work through that and to heal. Um, I think it really kind of helps um, with the motivation. And just even, even when you're thinking about dealing with the grief about the loss of kids coming in and out of your home, um, the fact that you can give them an opportunity to thrive, I think, is wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Looks like Ms. Beavers uh, uh, is in with us now. How you doing, Ms. Beavers? I'm great. I'm sorry. I'm having problem with my with my uh, video with my camera. I had problem with the camera, but I'm here now. You are worth the wait. I'm trying to tell you. We would have waited all day long. <laughs> so, Mr. Beaver, why don't you talk a little bit about your motivation um, to foster? My motivation is, you know, I, I was from a family of 18 sisters and brothers. A lot mm -hmm. of kids, surrounded by a lot of kids, and that's what I love. So when my mom passed away at 45 and leaving nine kids home, I thought, okay, I'll take the two youngest one and bring them back to California. And I raised them six and seven. And I did that. So a few years later, I got married. And I thought, now I start my own family. And I wanted at least five kids. But it took me five years to get pregnant with that first one. And wow. that was it. No more kids. And I thought, Lord, what is going on? I wanted five kids but it didn't happen. So I was sort of disappointed. And my girlfriend said, you know what? You love kids so well. Why don't you become a foster parent? And I said, that's a good idea. I'm going to become a foster parent and I'll have a house full of kids. <laughs> and that's what happened. So my first kid was my son that I longed for a, a boy. And he was one day old straight from the hospital. Mm -hmm. And I just loved him so much. I ended up adopting him. I adopted his sister which I got her at 11 days old. Then I got another young man that had a lot of problems. He was three years old, so I adopted him. So I adopted three of them, become legal guardian of them, and kids just kept coming, just kept coming. So I had to end up moving and getting a bigger place because my house was too small. And I didn't want it to be a hinder for me getting, getting my kids. 
So I moved to Cerritos in a bigger house, a four bedroom, and I filled all those rooms up with kids. Because wow. kids is my passion. Yeah. And it's a ministry to me yeah. to have these kids because you never knew what you was getting when these kids came to your door. You know, you never know what to expect. All kids have baggage. All kids have problems. All kids have a challenge. So I thought, give me the most challenged kid. I wanted to, I wanted to do something special. I wanted to work harder. I wanted to work for my money. I wanted to work with these kids to get them to where they wanted to be or where they hadn't been at all. At all. So uh, I started out with babies and I did that for 13 years. And babies were just a lot. <laughs> you know, they, they was bringing babies to my house all through the night, sometime two and three o'clock in the morning. I was still getting up, going to work for a nine-hour job at the county. I worked there and I took my babies to the babysitter. I said, I don't know anything about this child. Call me if you have any problem. When I'll see you when I get off from work. So that's what happened. And then after 13 years, I said, I need some me time. Let mm -hmm. me get rid of the babies and get an older child that can just go to school and I have some time for myself. So mm -hmm. it's all started then. Mm -hmm. And now I'm still doing it. You know, I keep saying, this is it. <laughs> when this kid get a certain age, I'm gonna stop. <laughs> you know, who knows when you're gonna stop? I don't know, I, I'm strong as ever. After 30 years plus, I'm just as strong as ever. So then Miss Beavers, what would you maybe say to folk who are considering fostering uh, children, what would be your recommendation or things for them to consider? I would tell them, you know, if you have the space and you have the time, you have the love, uh, consider helping these kids. You know, I, don't just do it because you feel like you can make an extra buck, but that is not it. These yeah. kids need some stability. They need love. They need companionship. And you need to be there for, somebody needs to be there for them to train these kids. Because some of these kids now, they don't know. They can grow up to be doctors and lawyers and school yeah. teachers and, and, and professors. You know, whatever they want to be in life, it's your job to help them get there until they can get back with their biological parents. A lot mm -hmm. of, sometimes they get to go back, sometimes they don't. But I feel like if you, you got to have some patience. Mm -hmm. You got to have extra love that you didn't even know you had to deal with these kids because you might get a kid today and say, you know what, I can't do it. You, you, you got to be motivated because yeah. if you're not motivated, uh, it won't work. Yeah. And sometimes yeah. these kids keep me motivated. <laughs> so I think everybody, you know, like I said, when your kids are grown and move away and you have that extra space in your house and you have that boy there, put a kid there. Try it. Yeah. You can get all ages, from babies to toddlers to, to teenagers, whatever you want, they got them out there. Yeah. They're just waiting for you to make that phone call. Well, when I think about what families should consider um, is that uh, when we're all well, I think that's what makes us a great society. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we have to make the extra step of sacrifice to ensure the, the well-being of someone else who's unrelated to us, knowing that that impact will ultimately impact the larger community of people. We want a better life and social uh, like growth. I think it requires us to take care of the marginalized, the vulnerable, the least of these. And sometimes our children can fall into those categories. And so I would suggest if you can, you know, give your life and your home to a child that's in need. Right. I agree.